and the Oscar for achievement in sound mixing, sound editing, and overall audio quality in a group under age 16 goes to... This is just great. Charlie Reed! Ah, 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 look at him run. Like a chicken that's just got out of the slaughterhouse. Wow. Oh my gosh. This means so much to me. I was just a little boy growing up in Minnesota, um, which was right near Canada. And I remember Canadian hoodlums used to come across the border and beat up me and my brother. But Brian Martinez Lombardi used to save us. When we teach us about sound mixing, don't cut me off, don't cut me off. I will now sing for you, Shallow, by Bradley Cooper and Lady Gaga. Welcome to The Transcript. This week, the folks at The Transcript get to the bottom of some senior trip confusion, explore athletic superstition with Hamped Up, get speaking with In Other News, and host Mr. Hansen on The Leftovers. Hi, I'm Kaylee Hunter Gasparini, and welcome back to Tell It Like It Is. <laughs> Senior activities are fast approaching, and with them, many complaints from the senior student body. The current plan includes a trip to High Meadows as well as the Red Sox game. The issue? Very few students have expressed interest in attending these events, especially High Meadows. I set out to ask my fellow seniors how they feel about this matter. I feel like I would not go for that purpose, that it would be sort of a waste of money and I wouldn't feel like I was having a good enough time. I think a lot of people are really invested in prom and I think spending more class money toward making our prom like sort of above and beyond and making it like a really fun and exciting and like one of a kind experience for everyone would be better than like going for a Red Sox game that we all could go to on our own time. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, and doing that instead of us making it, like instead of making us choose whether or not prom should be cheaper or more expensive. I sat down with senior class president Carolyn Jordan and senior class advisor Mr. Gordon to find out where the class officers stand. Trying to gauge student interest right now and figure out whether or not um, it will be an option this year. Just because uh, if people don't want to go, people don't want to go, and it might be a fun fun trip for people to do. But again, um, we would rather. Uh, put our funds towards something that students actually care about doing. One of the big things about student government or being a student is is having your voice heard. And if there are things that you know isn't aren't happening yet, then it's great for you to get involved. Hello, if you're out there, we want to hear your ideas. Come to our meetings. You're invited. So seniors, if you have a strong opinion on our class trip, keep an eye out for the upcoming meeting and make sure to attend and share your thoughts. Happy Friday. Y'all ready for this? This week on Hamped Up, I wanted to draw attention to a topic I've touched upon before, mental health, but more specifically, superstition. This concept hits close to home and I hope to bring more awareness to this issue as a whole. I sat down with Benjamin Thompson, who specializes in counseling and mental health performance skills training to get his insight on this topic. Well, you know, I work with a lot of athletes and a lot of high school athletes, and uh, right off the bat, let me just say, um, I don't think those are ri rituals or things that need to be broken at all, necessarily. Um, rituals and routines um, are actually really good things. It's only when they get to the point that maybe they slow you down so much that, you know, um, you get in trouble with a referee or an umpire that they're problematic. But there's a tremendous amount of research out there um, showing that people who have these kinds of even super superstitions, rituals, benefit from them because it gives them a sense of control and, and a sense that, um, you know, that, that maybe they're going to actually do well. So confidence is a big part Austin of it. Austin Red Sox, they started growing beards in spring training for solidarity, and look what happened. The Red Sox have won it. 
And, what is and just to give you some examples, I mean, there's some really famous examples of people who use and have these rituals. Um, Wade Boggs of the Boston Red Sox, he always ate chicken for lunch the day of every single Red Sox game. That was his ritual, and he was an incredible batter. Michael Jordan um, always wore his University of North Carolina um, shorts underneath his Chicago Bulls shorts because they were good luck shorts for him. It's probably the biggest issue I see among high school athletes these days, anxiety and people's anxiety level getting so high that they're, you know, throwing up before events. Um, they're worrying for days ahead of time. Um, they're just not enjoying themselves because they feel so much uh, anxiety, you know, before events and stuff. So a lot of the work around that is helping them to learn ways to relax, you know, calming breaths, mindfulness meditation, but also looking at their thoughts. Because a lot of times the people have these thoughts like, I've got to score this many points, or I can't mess up, or everybody's going to hate me. Um, those thoughts make them more anxious. So we try to help them be a little more realistic in their thinking. You know, so even if I have a bad game, is everyone going to truly hate me? Is that going to be the end of my life? Um, trying to correct that automatic, catastrophic, negative thinking or anxious thinking that feeds the anxiety and makes them tight. So it's about teaching people to calm down and just be in the moment. To prove how normal this way of thinking is, I took to the halls of NHS to ask some athletes about their personal superstitions. So what are your superstitions? I eat a Rice Krispie treat before every game. <laughs> and why do you do that? What benefit do you think it has on your athletic performance? I think it gives me a lot of energy for the game. If we win a baseball game, uh, I don't wash my jersey until we lose because I believe that we'll win. Okay, and why do you do that? I just believe we'll win. I just believe it's good luck. <laughs> And it usually works out. We're usually pretty good. So my lucky number is 14. So I do seven swipes of deodorant in each arm because it equals 14, obviously. And um, I always wear the same hair tie every single game. And I wear my hair in the same hairstyle also. Boys basketball played last night against Tantasqua in the quarterfinals, and girls basketball will play a semifinal playoff game either March 4th, 5th, or 6th. Thanks for watching Hamped Up. I'm Lulu Kessen. Hi, I'm Amelia Tamayo. Last Saturday, Venezuelan troops loyal to President Nicolas Maduro violently drove off foreign aid convoys sent by opposition leader Juan Guaido in the Venezuelan border. In other news... This week, we wanted to get in touch with local businesses, so we met up with a Northampton High School Class of 2012 alum who started his own business while he was still a student here. His name is Sam Coates Fink, and he's a bread baker. He builds his own brick ovens, gives classes in the community, and even has a few high school interns now. We sat down with this young entrepreneur to understand his passion. Built my first clay oven in high school. I sold my first bread at the high school at NHS. I sort of made up an internship. It was before internships were an official thing. Um, but I woke up two mornings every, every week at 4.30 and baked bread and sold it at the high school. Work with different communities. Some I do, I uh, built an oven at the Amherst Synagogue as a workshop. So 30 families showed up on the morning of Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year, and found a pile of clay and a pile of sand, and we spent the day building an oven together that we've then been baking in every week since September. I wrote a Hebrew school curriculum that teaches uh, Jewish ritual, Jewish values. I also teach private classes where I'm hosting somebody's house, and um, and then they bring they bring their community to me. This year, I'm really focusing on building more clay ovens as workshops. That's so that's the one side of business, and I, and I love that because literally from the first time you're picking up a ball of clay, you're building community. You're building as community. You're making the oven together. When I was a senior in high school, to be able to leave the high school, work on a project by myself, and then sharing it like back in in the high school was such a powerful learning experience and a powerful um, social experience. Not only did I learn how to bake bread better and learn how to run a business, but um, it also changed the way I interacted with my, the students that I baked for at the high school, the teachers I baked for at the high school. It was also super fun, like showing up with like 24 loaves of bread in the high school, it was like super fun, you know? So I think, you know, the, the idea that other interns could have a similar experience to me, that's, that's one part of it. The other side of it is that um, I can learn a lot from 
the interns and they're part of communities that I'm not part of. What really drew my attention to this internship was um, my work at Abundance Farm over the summer. Um, there we ended up making a bunch of bread with Sam and he actually helped us build a bench in the greenhouse. Some highlights of the internship have been um, just his daily routine, you know, going, um, not only baking bread with him, but also reaching out to the community, working on um, these things that he calls empathy calls. The empathy call is where, um, where you call someone and you ask them about the impact that you've had in their life. And so it's basically asking people to say nice things or mean things about you. Working with Sam, he really wants to keep us accountable for our own personal goals. I think just that, that accountability between me and the other interns is really good in keeping up a good work ethic. Thanks for watching. Remember, it's never too soon to start working on what you're passionate about, and it just might work out. I'm Amelia Tamayo, and this has been In Other News. Bye! And welcome back to The Leftovers. This week, we are here with math teacher, Mr. Hansen. Hola. Would you like to say what we are cooking this week? Because I'm not sure I can Sure. It. I'm not sure I can pronounce it either, but I can try. Okay. This is Litten Rund Sauté Brod Med Fisk in Uti. It means little round sweetbreads with fish in it. It's a family recipe that's been in my family for some, for some time, time now. Some yes. Time. Okay, so the ingredients that you will need for this recipe is one cup of white sugar, a cup and a half of all-purpose flour, and then you need a teaspoon and three-fourths of baking powder. Yeah, and so those are all of the dry ingredients, and then the wet ingredients are a half a cup of milk, should I be whisking that in? Go for it. And a half a cup of butter. Yep. Already melted. Two teaspoons of vanilla extract. And then last but not least, one egg. Would you like to crack the egg, Mr. Hansen? Like Is it a good that? idea? Can you hold the bowl for me? I can. I like to use vegan eggs from vegan chickens. <laughs> You'll get my dry cleaner spill. <laughs> uh, this is my favorite part of the dish. Um, so we had pre-cooked uh, fish. What type of fish? This is lutefisk, fish that's been preserved by soaking it in lye. It's healthy and good for you. So I like to put about a spoonful of the cake batter and then just rip a piece of the fish like so and just kind of <laughs> stick it in there. Sometimes I like to leave it peeking out a little bit. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. It's exciting. All right, so we are going to uh, fill the rest of these and then cook them. Uh, so now that we're back with the cooked Swedish dish, <laughs> so we're just going to take a nice dip and then a good swirl, and then just... Cheers. Cheers. Mmm. <laughs> mmm, right. that's really something. The following questions are um, from me, but also some of your past students or students you currently have. What's the greatest experience you've had in your life? Well, my mind goes right to when my kids are born. Mm -hmm. I have to think about that. If you could right now have any job in the world that you have never done before, mm -hmm. what would it be? Right now, Elon Musk is supposed to be having his tweets pre-cleared by someone in-house, and it's no one's actually doing that, but I think that would be a cool job to be like the, the the Twitter sitter for Elon Musk mm -hmm. and tell him no why he can't tweet that at three in the morning. I think that would be a really cool job. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Hansen. Thank you again. Would you say this is like the high point of your journalistic career? Yeah, I actually it's, would. It's kind of sad. I just feel bad for you now. <laughs>
Thanks for watching. February was Black History Month. This was an especially good month to remember and educate yourself on black historical figures and modern day idols. Remember to reflect on what you were doing to help black people within your community. If you want to learn more about what you can do as this month comes to a close, come to the Students of Color Alliance every Tuesday at 2 p.m. in room 305. <laughs>